You have reached the Geek Elite. Good luck. Tomorrow. I would pay genuinely, I think, up to $100 to have my Google Home speak in Gladys's voice. There's got to be a way Wait, to do that. Do you say it? Is, is it Gladys? I always said GLaDOS. Yeah. Okay, so most people say GLaDOS. I cannot. <laughs> yeah, no, most people say it the other way. I uh. think you're all monsters. <laughs> Welcome back for another shift on the Geeks Watch. This week we are here starting a new Disney Plus Marvel MCU show. It's the Falcon and the Winter Soldier. I know you've all been waiting for it. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, but as usual, we are going to get into the Week's Watch first, and then we will get into that show. So, Elizabeth, what did you watch this week? So, this week... Uh, since Oscar nominations came out, and Mitch likes to watch all of the nominations for the best picture, best picture, <laughs> um, I was like, "Oh, let's start with Mink because that looks interesting." And Mitch goes, "I've already seen it," but <laughs> <laughs> he was kind enough to rewatch it with me. Um, so Mank is a because I'm that kind of person. You Just, are that kind. I'm of person. so sacrificing. So sacrificing. So sacrificing. Um, So it is a film set in 1930s Hollywood, uh, basically regarding the the, the real-life people, or pseudo-real-life people, um, who inspired Citizen Kane. And it's basically about the writing of Citizen Kane. Um, Hmm. It stars Gary Oldman as Herman Mank, uh, Amanda Seyfried as Marion Davies, um, and Lily Collins as Reed Alexander. They tend to be, they're the biggest players, but it's got a lot of really great names in it. I enjoyed it quite a bit, even if I hated our protagonist (laughs) pretty much the entire time. Um... What I found really interesting is it's filmed and written very much the same way Citizen Kane was, mm-hmm. interesting. Um, which is cool. a, which is a fun parallel. So you get a lot of the same like flashbacks and flash forwards and little snippets of this event, where as opposed to a continuous story of any real kind. Um, But so I I thought it did a really good job. And it was one of those because I didn't, I've only seen Citizen Kane a few times. Um, It's not something that I've really paid a lot of attention to. Um, I didn't realize Herman Mank wrote it, to be quite honest. Didn't realize Orson Welles wrote it, to be quite honest. (laughs) Um, But it was one of those, I was watching the movie and I was like, this feels like another movie. Like, there's something about this field and then you get to the end and it discusses citizen kane and i'm like oh right yes now it makes sense <laughs> everything kind of fell into place for me so that was that was really interesting there was a lot of second hand embarrassment throughout the movie which i think is what i struggled the oh, most no. with <laughs> there's a there's a lot of that for not being a comedy there was a lot of second hand embarrassment yeah so but yeah. overall, a good movie. It was great to see uh, Tywin Lannister again, uh, John. Charles Dance shows up. He Ooh, is playing... Yeah. Um, William, William Randolph, Randolph Hearst. Hearst. Thank you. Hearst. Yeah. So he, which, he's actually... I think he's best known as the, the antagonist from the 1980s Eddie Murphy film, The Golden Child. <laughs> <laughs> this is right. I mean, That's to right. be fair, I feel like Charles Dance always plays an antagonist. He almost always does. Yes. That is correct. Uh, and then, you know, to 
see all the um, controversy that comes up at the end of the movie about Herman Mankiewicz getting any type of credit yeah. for writing the film or not because it's all uh, Orson, Orson Welles' Wells. idea. And then also mm-hmm. Orson Welles at the age of 24 getting to have you know final cut and complete control over his film, which is almost unheard of. Like That was an incredible yeah. thing and thus threw all of Hollywood into a, fren- a frenzy. Now, what did you think of the uh, comparisons of the politics part of the story to then to now? So it's it is it's always fun to see. So they actually did a very good job handling. I I think that election mm-hmm. in particular with um, Upton Sinclair, who was played by Bill Nye. Mm-hmm. Yeah, which I, is, I forgot about that. <laughs> Um, because you don't think of Bill Nye as an actor, but I mean, obviously, he's playing a heightened version of himself whenever he's on exactly the screen. But yeah, so, but no, it was definitely one of those because, like, I the like one scene you actually see Sinclair, I was like, okay, I know that face, and I don't know actors <laughs> and actresses' faces, so this has to be somebody important. I'm like, who is that? And Mitch is like, oh, I, I don't, I. He's like, I don't remember who they cast and so we both had to google it um because i happened to be looking away at the moment that they were he was on screen oh. yeah i was gonna say you had to look up whether it was bill nye yeah i was <laughs> like, i was working on yeah. something else at the at the time and i just didn't even look at it and I, it's like i remember when i watched it yeah that's right bill nye <laughs> but no but so and, and the credits it was william nye ah <laughs> and uh, the but the it, the most poignant thing that I think they got very accurate for the time period was the dismissal in the early 30s of Hitler as not really being a threat, not being a real thing, not something to take seriously, because he's just going to go away. Um, obviously, we now know not what happened. No. but It just took a it, little bit longer than they guessed for him to just go away. <laughs> But they had a lot more fire and a lot, yeah, <laughs> uh, a lot more dead bodies. Um, but that was that's very accurate to the historical record of people's thought processes and conversations of the time regarding that. Uh, so, and the 1930s is where you do start to see a lot more political advertising that you mm-hmm. hadn't seen before. So that was that's very apropos. Very apropos. So, since it's the only one of the best picture nominees you've watched so far, how do you feel it 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 uh its chances? Probably not great. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. I what that that really bad um George Clooney movie for Netflix also got put in there, I believe, right? Not for best picture, no. Oh god, thank you. That yeah. movie sucked. <laughs> I I don't think this has it's not it's not snobby enough. Okay, that's fair. One thing mm. yeah. you should know tra- traditionally uh, Hollywood loves movies about Hollywood. So, mm-hmm. however, I don't think this one is going to win. <clears throat> Hmm. Okay, uh, Mank is a Netflix original and it is on there. Uh, it is on Netflix. <laughs> Steven, what did you watch this week? So I have the one I had to talk about this week is actually one that I should have been talking about last week during our Oops All Weeks Watch episode. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Uh, I traded with John for the I don't know like marriage PTSD movie that I made him watch. <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah, he watched Blue Valentine in trade for me finally watching The Goonies. So Yay. I watched Goonies. <laughs> it's a good movie. It's it's fun. Like I I like the innocent kind of adventure thing, all the the young Lees kind of stumbling their way into stuff. I mean, that's pretty much the setup for all anime from when I was a kid that wasn't trying to be overly serious. So, of course I'm going to enjoy that. It is still really interesting to go back and watch old movies that people basically like because of the nostalgia as a person living now, uh, a human adult in 2021. (laughs) 
Uh, because there's some really bad acting and some very <laughs> bad edits. <laughs> wow. Yeah. yeah. Um, I never thought of, of bad edits, but I mean, I can definitely see the bad acting. It's, yeah. It hurt. There's a I, lot of bad edits. <laughs> I feel there were like a lot I've of sequences. seen them before the last few times I've watched it. I'm like, ooh. But that's how it is. <laughs> I still love it. John, I don't care. <laughs> John, John, you were saying something? Oh, yeah, no. There was entire sequences that were cut out that would explain why the editing looks so choppy. But, um, yeah, they... Like the octopus? There was one famous one. Yes, that's the big one <laughs> yeah. that everybody knows about, yeah. There, there's all these parts where even... I mean, obviously, there's still plenty of movies now that have this, but people expect more of character motivation explanation i think um you don't always necessarily get it or anything or it's like the bare minimum for explanation it's like yeah no because their dad died so they're gonna do it but they they really don't convince you of anything (laughs) having to happen for any particular reason it's like you're sitting down you're watching this movie you're eating some food you ordered in probably go ahead and watch it and talk about the 80s like that's what the Goonies is at this point, and that's good enough for me. <laughs> like I, I was actually thinking about this movie. I, maybe it was because you guys brought it up, but I was thinking, like, did they only break the mother's arm in that movie simply so that they they could tell you that Mouth knows Spanish so that he could later use it? Like, is is I that the correlate. trail of that? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, a, yeah. it's a device. Well, actually, no. The crazy part is he's using it expertly but shitty yes <laughs> yeah he knows great spanish there are words in there that you don't learn when you learn like donde esta la biblioteca like there's words in there that are good words uh, well of course no, he's a teenager he learned all the bad words first <laughs> it's true but yeah I, like it was it's an interesting one i don't know that that's the best thing i can say about goonies it's who, good if who, you if okay oh, i was gonna say which of the goonies do you did you relate with the most I mean, Sean Astin. Yeah? Yeah, Mikey. That's fair. Yeah. How about like everybody else? Eternal optimism. Elizabeth, who'd you relate with? Oh. I don't, go to somebody oh. else first. Jessica. I think. <laughs> no, don't. I'm there too. Not, not Jessica. Oh, John. John. <laughs> um, I don't know if I could say I could relate to him, but my favorite was Josh Brolin. Just because he was, you know, the cool guy that, you know, and he got somebody... to make out with Annie. <laughs> Is there a Andy? Because of that, yes. <laughs> I, I yeah, did like. But... I liked the part early on in the in the movie where he had to ride the small bike. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> that was great. Like, he was just like, "Yeah, I guess I'm using the small bike," and just rode it all the way there. That scene is genuinely still hilarious. That poor little girl lost her bike. Like he <laughs> he's intending to bring it back, but now it's off of a cliff somewhere. That man also he. He would have killed him, right? Oh, yeah. He died. The douchebag guy. <laughs> like, Bran died right there, and the rest of the movie's all like a dream <laughs> as he's dying. It's, Col- it's the Rugrats. Everyone's inside of Angelica's head. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah. Probably for me, Steph. Steph. I, I, which is played by Martha Plimpton. Plimpton. That's right. That yeah. I was. I could I could think of the character, but I couldn't think of the actress. <laughs> so I was like, I have to look that up. Um, but yeah. Just being the like friend who's along for the ride. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, what are you getting me into? <laughs> <laughs> so, but sure, I, I, why not? Yeah. Are you saying the same, Jessica? I I feel like stuff, yeah, but I also feel like I'm a little bit of Mikey. Nice, but as well, I guess because I'm definitely that person that gets dragged along things, but I'm also that person would want to go find buried treasure <laughs> and believe that it was true. So. <laughs> I can see myself in both. Yeah. I always wanted to be Data, but I... See, and that's who I related with. Yeah. I related with Data, not just because the Asian thing, yeah. but because I'm so smart no. and no one listens to me. <laughs> yeah, no, that's not right. <laughs> no, My if, problem if was... If, go ahead. Oh, no, you... Yeah. I was going to say, my problem always was I related to the thinking of all the really cool ideas, but I never would have actually built any of the things. <laughs> like, yeah. exactly. I, I have all these great ideas. I no idea how to actually execute. execute. <laughs> uh, what were you about to say, and Stephen? I, I was going to say, I still, I do not understand how everyone who likes this movie, likes mm-hmm. superhero things, 
like CW shows sometimes. You're Does literally talking about me. Like Power Rangers. <laughs> <laughs> He's literally talking about me. <laughs> He's just attacking you. It's fine. I know. It's hit the diagram there. He, I told you. Yeah. It's the same. It's the same reason for last year la, or last week when we we when a different subject come up. It hit at the wrong moment for me where I was. I'm not allowed. Like at the age where I wasn't allowed to like certain kid things anymore, <laughs> and I'm not old enough to be like I don't care. I can like whatever I want. Yeah, no, I get it. Not, not like I'm not a girl, but I'm not yet. A, I'm not a girl, but I'm not yet a woman. Exactly, I get it. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you know, this movie has one of the worst offenses that somebody who likes butterfly knives ever commits. When Joy Pantaleone pulls one out, like he opens it like two handed, like oh, like a pair of scissors oh, or something. <laughs> It was like even as a kid, I was like, "No, that's wrong." Like, what, what are you doing? Wait, with his character, was there some scene cut out with these scenes that people do apparently know about that gave a motivation for him singing? Did they hear him from a cave? What What was the necessity for him to be singing in Italian? Oh, you mean the the just old the other singing brother. criminal? He's just a singing Italian. Yeah. It's just a. It's, it's just, just a thing. A, it's, it's a stereotype it's just, it's for Italian. It's a stereotype it's a, for Italian men. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, but no, that, that's that's what I watched. Um, that's the thing that I should like. I was supposed to have watched. I watched plenty of other things this week. Um, the other one that I wanted to talk about is uh, Keenan. Don't watch that show. Yeah, that was bad. I watched the first episode it's, of that too. It's real bad. <laughs> it's really, really, really bad. And I'm a person who who like who likes currently watching Mr. Mayor and Young Rock when they come out every every week. I say, is it more painful to watch than what is the Sci-Fi Channel sh- Vagrant sh- Queen? Vagrant Queen that we stopped watching. <laughs> no, Vagrant Queen, which is no. boring. This is this is, this hurts the rest of us the same way it hurts you. Like, oh, so it's going to hurt you more. <laughs> no, yeah, because even like, I'm not the writing it. for things, it's too fast. Like hmm. any anything that happens in the show is just because someone wanted that thing to happen in the yeah. show. And Don That's Johnson it. is the worst casting for that show. Like he yeah. does not make any sense in the with the rest of that cast. I, I just don't. I don't get any of it. The, the only reason I watched it is because I mean I've spent the rest of my life with Keenan. Like, yeah. <laughs> why not? And but then no, the- he failed me. The explanation, like, of how he met his wife, like, Keenan, like, that's just weird. Like, why would they even throw that in there? <laughs> I feel like pretty much everything falls into that category. Yeah. In the show. All right. So where don't, did don't you, watch that. Where did you watch Goonies? Uh, I actually rented it from YouTube. It was three ninety nine, and I had 48 hours. Okay. And Keenan is on NBC Universal if you want to watch it for whatever yeah. reason. But don't. <laughs> but- is that Ke- Keenan Ivory Wayans uh, nope. show? Or who is it's it? Keenan uh, Thompson. Thompson, thank you, of Keenan uh, and Kel. Okay. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm messing up. Okay. Yeah, yeah he's, a, he's a busy man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't, I don't think he's still on SNL. He is. Is yeah, he? He's he is. currently still he's, on he's, SNL. He's, oh, yeah. He, he's in sketches, also one of the head writers. Well, he's works been on the head writer for a while. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Jess, what did you watch this week? I tried to watch something new rather than just X-Men again, um, <laughs> which I think I'm hopefully almost done with, but I ended up not liking it and I only got through one episode and it was in Netflix original show called Firefly Lane, Oh, which is oh, a new, that's yeah, a new, cause that looked good. Yes, it did. Okay. So it might just be me cause I already am predisposed to not like dramas so okay. it uh, and I I did like aspects of it. I liked Katherine Heigl. I liked how she was acting. I actually liked the act- acting. I thought it was fine. Um, the story is about two women that are in their 40s that are best friends, even though they're in very different aspects of their lives. Um, you know, one is rich and famous, kind of sort of like not quite Oprah famous, but like that type of famous. Um, the other one was basically a stay-at-home mom for years and is getting a divorce. And it cuts back a lot to the past, how they first became friends when they were teenagers in the 70s. And I liked their relationship, but what I didn't like about it was it was clear to me that the drama aspect of it was A, going to be about their relationship and B, going to be over men. 
and over one of them has a child and it's over that like I didn't like the strains of the relationship that were going to happen basically like it was drama for the sake of drama when like by the time you're in the 40s and if you've been friends this long like you should be over this crap yeah or not I especially hated that the main drama was going to be that the guy I was like ugh. the the like, lead and then the yeah the yeah, other, what? I was going to say, the other lead actress is Sarah Chalk, right? Uh, Yes. Yes, it is. Okay. Just wanted to make yeah. sure I was thinking the right one. So, yeah. I, but I cut but you off. I'm sorry. Oh, no. It's it's fine. Um, It is very well acted. I do kind of like the writing style. I like the, the going back into the past thing. Just what I didn't like. It's not my particular drama that I prefer. Like, if I want two strong fe- female leads, I don't want their arguments to be over men. Like, kind of thing and that's where i felt it was going and also where my mom because this was supposed to be our next show after cb strike that's where my mom felt it was going to which is something that she also doesn't like so maybe i'll give it another shot maybe it'll surprise me maybe i'll just read the book as opposed to <laughs> watching it but how yeah, did it kind of just fell flat how did they do in in casting young actresses to play the younger versions of the characters. I feel like they did pretty good. It was like, especially since it's, I think the main story when they're in their forties, it's like 2003, which they repeat like five times <laughs> that it's 2003, <laughs> like in conversation, <laughs> like, okay, I get it. It's, it's only 2003. They need you to um, know why there's not going to be any cell phones and, and iPhones. Yeah, and stuff. <laughs> basically that is what it is. Cause they're, <laughs> isn't and why there's no housing crisis (laughs) so the past is the 70s and then also oh i forgot they also do their like right after college years too when they're starting their careers um so 80s 80 like late 80s 90s no 80s because they're teenagers in the 70s so um which that is just the younger version of their 40 year old selves like just with better makeup on basically but and then you get the kids for um for the 70s and i think because it's the 70s like it's so easy to make it look like they are that child version of them because the fashion and everything is kind of ridiculous and just the dramatic change between the 70s and the 2000s it's like yeah that's what you would look like in the 70s i i did have a show suggestion for you jess oh really what is it uh so we got the week-long uh, subscription trial for Shudder. There's a lot that we need to watch, oh, no. but the first thing Naeem okay. is watching is actually a show called A Discovery of Witches. Oh, that's on... Um... I know that. I have the book. I couldn't get through the book because <laughs> the main character drove me nuts, but maybe I could watch it. I believe that's on it's like like cable, sub- subscri- or cable um services also on, on wgn it's it's on one of those channels it's it's definitely on something else because shutter treats it like a thing that's from something else like you see whatever the company name is before the episode starts i believe yeah so i can try to find it elsewhere yeah. as well or i could just get that free trial because shutter is that isn't it like a horror streaming yes. app mm-hmm. okay shutter has a lot of good stuff as john has mentioned to us plenty of times oh yes that yeah i, I that do is true i do have to suggest again though as i did i think last week the alienist you should give that a try. You and your mom should yes. give that one a try. Ooh, that one might be... Well, I don't know. The book was super duper duper dark in descriptions <laughs> of the death, so I'm really worried. <laughs> it isn't like too, too gotcha. graphic. So, gotcha. um, maybe I'll watch like the first episode and then determine whether we'll... What about I tried to actually... That's oh, mm, I ended up not liking that. Oh, okay. And she would definitely not like that. Yeah, uh-huh. I couldn't get through the last season of it. But... um. I tried getting her to watch Lupin after Ooh. you both talked about it, but she was like, mm, like she just wasn't fully into it. So what? I think I can get her there. I'm pretty sure I can. <laughs> after Firefly, Firefly Lane like dropped us. Um, I do want to talk about two other things though. Um, it's actually one is a YouTuber um, called fire department Chronicles. So he is a fire departer and, um, but he does comedy about being a firefighter. But one of my favorite things that he does is he green screens himself into like those firefighting shows, like, mm. 
like nine 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 one one and Chicago Fire. Actually, I don't think he's done Chicago Fire yet, but like the ridiculous ones. And he like it's like he's actually there as a firefighter. Like, like this would never happen. But it's it's more comedy. It's not serious. He's more like reacting. Like, why don't you guys just I don't know get another ladder? Like, why don't you do that? <laughs> I like this idea. He's like. Why are you going to breach the door right now? There's another door. We checked it. It's not even warm over there. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. It's it's a lot of stuff like that. Like this wouldn't ever wouldn't ever happen, which is one of my biggest issues why I can't watch those shows cuz I'm like, "Oh my god." Like the one biggest thing that firefighter shows like to get wrong is like when you got somebody crushed under something. Like they're stuck under something and it's like all the firefighters are like, "Come on, let's go. Let's lift." No, they literally have this thing called an airbag, yeah. which goes near the person, and pull, he's and that's what I think. He's like, oh no, why don't we get the airbags that can actually lift this? <laughs> like, just... I feel I feel like they use the airbags more and more now. Like in the last year, they've been like pushing for. Maybe he's like his videos have gotten out there, and like the fire consultant on those shows have been like, yeah, I've been telling yeah. you, you guys should be using those airbags. Ah, <laughs> oh, damn. <laughs> no, but. He's hilarious. His firefighting comedy is hilarious. It definitely ri- reminds me of those times, like being a kid in a fire station sometimes, or just knowing like my dad's sense of humor. And it's like, yes, this is this is exactly right. Um, also, since I'm like one of the few that has a TikTok, I figured I should start talking about TikTokers <laughs> I like. <laughs> um, B. Dylan Holis, I think that's his at on TikTok. He um, makes recipes like pie recipes from the great depression wow like really nasty stuff and he actually eats them and makes them like one of the things he makes is the water pie Ugh. and but oh yeah it sounds, it's, like a, it sounds it's, like a euphemism i don't like that uh, no it's it's <laughs> straight up it's a pie where the pie is water and it's like a plain flour crust yeah like he also like think the latest one i saw was the spam pie which was gross yeah. Yes, but he's also made, there was like an apple pie one that I can't remember what it was made with, but that one actually tasted good. He was like really surprised, like, oh, okay. So it's just cool to see him do these very bare medium ingredients. He also has a very funny and hilarious editing technique and style for TikTok where it's just very Mm. jumpy and just, he's a hilarious person. Um, So I definitely recommend his videos on TikTok. Okay, so Firefly Lane was Netflix. Uh, mm-hmm. Your YouTuber was Fire Department Chronicles. Fire Fire Department Chronicles and B Dylan Hollist. Hollis, yeah. Hollis on TikTok. TikTok. Okay, John, what did you watch this week? Well, I was graced with the presence of the Snyder Cut. Oh, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> Now, first thing I want to say is I would have liked if they spaced it out into like four one-hour chunks because that's kind of how I accidentally ended up watching it anyway. I couldn't sit through the whole thing all at once. But it's not for lack of wanting. I just have to sleep and work. So, you know, I just couldn't devote four hours to actually just sit and watch it. The spirit is strong, but the body is weak. <laughs> yes. and, and squishy or whatever. Um, <laughs> So before I get too far into it, I, I something completely slipped my mind. I wanted to ask uh, Elizabeth and Mitch, since you both saw it. In Mink, do they reference where Citizen Kane got the Rosebud reference from? No, they do no. not. They just they make fun of the fact that uh, that most people keep thinking, or not, that most people were going to think that it's a sexual euphemism for Marion Davies. Marion Davies. Yeah, yeah. The lady parts, but yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. But they don't actually say why Herman Mank- Mankiewicz put in, uh, put that in there. Okay. Well, yeah, the, the, the legend has it that it was his nickname for his mistress, for her specific anatomy. Ah, of her, her so that made that but joke anyway. must've been an allusion to it. The, the I, one thing I forgot to bring up is that that movie is directed by David Fincher, but it was written by his father like t- a decade before, uh, and he passed away. And that was David Fincher, like directing. Like after they he made Mindhunter, Netflix said, "What would you like to do next?" And he said, "I want to make this movie that my dad wrote, and it's all about uh, Herman Mankiewicz." Um, but yeah, I forgot to bring that up. Hmm. Right on. So 
<clears throat> my thoughts on the Justice League, I liked it. I didn't like the Whedon cut. I didn't like Batman versus Superman. I didn't like Man of Steel. And to be fair, I also didn't like um, Superman Returns. Is that what it was called? The one with Brandon with, uh, Routh? Brandon Routh. Yep. Yeah. To be fair, I don't think... I mean... <sighs> In all of its cinematic incarnations, I only give a pass to the first two Superman movies, just purely because of the nostalgia factor. They're not good movies. Um, and as a matter of fact, I think the sequel, the Donner Cut, is the better of the two films also, because Richard Lester is just kind of a shitty director overall. Um, so, I mean, we already don't have a good foundation to begin with. To say that this is probably my favorite version of the superheroes all put together is not saying much because it's such a low bar, you know? And the Whedon cut was like a doctored, and this is like a gold-plated doctored, you know? Oh, it's dude, sick. It's, it's, um, it's better, and I want to say I enjoyed it more. And, I mean, I'm not the only one. It's definitely, if you do a comparison of Rotten Tomatoes... The, the original Whedon cut is at like a 40%, so it's definitely rotten. And this one is like at a 75 right now. And people are resonating with it, I think, only because we have like a battered wife syndrome right now where we're so used to just getting shit on that something yeah. that's a little bit better is like, whoa, this is amazing. You know, yeah. we're having this far reaction. Now, here's my other question. How much of the the enjoyment of it is because the fans are the ones who pushed for this, so they feel like they have to say they like it because they the asked for it. <laughs> I mean, that's that's a factor, but I I mean that had no effect on my okay l- taking a kinder look at this one. The, the other but thing I would say that oh sorry, the I fans the people who were the hardest like the hardline Snyder cut people. Yeah, mm-hmm. have also come out against this one, saying that this still is not the Snyder cut <laughs> because they want like uh, pure uncut Zack Snyder for some reason, and this isn't it still. Well, the you still have his Justice's Gray version that's going to be coming out. Oh, that's right. Yeah, he wanted to release a black and white version also. Yep. I didn't yeah. know that was actually happening. I thought that was what we were going to get in the first place. Honestly, no. No, he says that it's supposed to also come out on HBO, HBO Max, but... Hmm. but uh, sorry, John. No, Go ahead. No, that, you're perfectly fine. Now, my take on these kinds of things is that normally I agree that the, the director's cut is the go-to in most cases. Um, I forget which one is the definitive cut of Blade Runner now, but it's I'm sure that's the, the one not, I would prefer. It's not, it's not the director's cut. The director's no. cut is my favorite one, but that's not the one that yeah. everyone likes the most. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, I just like the, the one that doesn't have the... the the one that's actually Ridley Scott's cut is not called the director's cut. Yeah, it's called the final cut. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and that's the one that I like. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's the one I go with also. Then, um, I mean, whichever version you like, because there's like five or six of them by now. The only one that you're wrong to like is the one that has the narration because it's just bad. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody True. that likes yeah. that is just a bad person. Um. So, in most cases, as I was saying, the director's cut usually is the better of the cuts. Um, in Daredevil, the theatrical... I mean, I, I hated the theatrical version. I thought that movie sucked. But the director's cut is a little better because there's more character stuff in it. There's more plot, and things make a little bit more sense. Sometimes I'll forgive a movie's shortcomings if it's at least more cohesive. Um, that was one of the biggest problems that Justice League had, is that it's just you're just throwing all these things and like almost randomly, haphazardly, and it, it's it's a mess. A um, few cases where the director's cut is not better is Donnie Darko. Um, <laughs> nobody should let Richard Kelly just like unbridled, you know, access to his editing. Um, I would definitely say that one's weaker. Um, so I would even go so far, Mitch, uh, and I'm definitely going to be kind of like shitting on you a little bit here. Okay. But I would go so far as to say that if there was a director's cut of Blade Trinity... I might actually be a bit kinder to it than I am to the theatrical. I mean, you Although, really um, hate David Goyer, so I don't think you would be kinder to it. <laughs> you know, I, I would put that aside. I can separate the artist from the art. Okay. All right. <laughs> I would give it a chance if they had a, a, a director's cut that was 
well, you know, a little better. But uh, anyway, I will. I will just, start the the hashtag. Give me the Goyer cut. <laughs> release the Goyer cut. Yes, release please. the Goyer cut. Yeah. So I, I know because Mitch had to watch the Snyder cut. Snyder cut. Or and technically, it's Zack Snyder's Justice League. Zack Snyder's yeah. Justice League. Because you guys, because they're going to talk about it on Sunday. Su- on well, we talked about it earlier today. Oh. <laughs> But they're on another podcast. And so he started it before I got home. I came in about two hours in. And the last two hours felt like four hours to me. (laughs) So I can't imagine what the full four hours actually feels like. To be fair, I have not watched Man of Steel, Batman v Superman. Or Justice League. Or Justice League. Or any, or Aquaman, or... Any of the other ones. <laughs> I've seen the Wonder Woman's. That's it. <laughs> that is all I've seen. <laughs> but I, I was... I get... I, I was bored. <laughs> <laughs> now, have you seen Shazam? Yes. Okay. Because uh, Wonder Woman, one. Shazam, and maybe Aquaman, they're kind of in a separate breed because they're starting to break away from the Snyderverse. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's one of the things I wanted to bring up, too, is that I'm not a fan of the Snyderverse. That being said, I thought this movie was well made. In, in, in spite of how long it is, I, it didn't feel like four hours to me, but that could be because I watched it in like one hour chunks. But I liked what I saw. See, I, I thought this could have been like a 10 episode miniseries. And that was my thought when I when I was watching with Mitch. I was like, why didn't he just write a TV series like this feels like you took a TV series season and was like, here's a movie. Don't don't put that out in the yeah. ether that he's going to get <laughs> ten hours to, to an extra to no, six to, hours to make this to be, again. To to be fair though, I feel like that that's what Marvel's doing right now. They're realizing that they can put in the character mm-hmm. stuff, like the regular like issues, so to speak, of a franchise in T V format, and then the big crossover like specials will be the movies i think is where we're headed with how they're starting to do these now and i'm all for it so that being said snyderverse this movie was a lot more violent than the original i mean there was wonder woman straight up kills a dude yeah i mean there's no way (laughs) we're we're talking about the head thing yes yeah yeah so she cuts off the person's head and then doesn't Mm -hmm. isn't it immediately after that when she goes up to that little girl is like you could be whatever you want (laughs) 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 bodies laying around (laughs) like she she stops for an inspirational moment like like it like in the middle of G.I. Joe, like the G.I. Joe movies, they slipped in one of the like anti drug segments from the G.I. Joe cartoon <laughs> in the eighties. Yeah. Wait, Steven, did you watch and this? No, I've just seen select moments. Oh, okay. I'm not watching this movie. Yeah, I knew you weren't gonna watch it. That's why I was surprised. <laughs> yeah, but that definitely was something that happened in here where I was like, Whoa, geez. Like that was dark for Wonder Woman. Um <laughs> And there's there's a few random f bombs in there, including one at the very end. Where I don't want to give too much away for anybody that still hasn't seen it. I wouldn't blame you. It's been out for like three days by now, but most people probably haven't gotten around to it because it's just kind of you know it, it's a challenge to get through because finding four hours nowadays in your adulthood sometimes isn't that easy. Um, but Batman tells another character that he's going to fucking kill them, and I was like, uh. that's not a very Batman thing to say, but I guess it just could be like the times, you know, or maybe it's just at a point now where, you know, it's no, desperate times. Called you're desperate you're measures, rationalizing way too much. No. That whole scene does not make any sense whatsoever. <laughs> yeah. I have, I'm going to end up watching this movie. I know because I already hate it so much that <laughs> my mom made the point, like you're not allowed to hate it unless you actually watch it. And I'm like, okay, fine. So I'm going to end up watching it. But, like, I'm that person that I didn't like Christian Bale's Batman movies. Wow. Because I didn't like how dark they were. Like, I can openly say, yes, they were cool and unique. But I don't. They're not a Batman movie. That's They're not my Batman movie. Like, and that's exactly what the Justice League movie did and Man of Steel did. It's like, I don't want a Superman that kills people. I don't want this. I want, I want my, I don't. 
I don't know. <laughs> or if they are going to be coming, I want like a Deadpool where it's hilarious. <laughs> just I don't. I don't. I'm just not excited to watch yeah. it, but I know I have to because I can't hate it so much and not watch it. Fair. That's fair. Uh, yeah. If you, I, I suggest that you sit down and you watch it with the, the kids that you teach just an hour a day. <laughs> <laughs> they can only get 15 minutes of screen time, but like, <laughs> okay. 15 minutes. It'll just last Make longer. sure Wonder Woman kills a guy. <laughs> And I'll tell all the girls in the room, remember this. Down with the Patreon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, there you go. J- Zack Snyder's Justice League is on HBO Max, and it is the only place that you can watch it. So, hopefully, or you have- IMAX eventually. Uh, eventually, if maybe I don't know if if they well right now I, I don't think IMAXs are open, but um, oh. Uh, uh, yeah, that would be up to to Warner Brothers if they decide to put it in on on IMAX as well. I'm sure they're going to because it's doing well enough. Maybe we have really we really have no idea that they don't release any type of stats on well, what streaming does. I don't see what the point of releasing it in IMAX formatting would be then if they're not going to do an IMAX release later. Because oh, I, that's... I, when I saw at the beginning that it was going to be four by three, I was like, what? Yep, it just bothered me so much. Like, oh I, yeah, I was. I'm like, I become a snob for that kind of thing now. <laughs> well, I mean, I just, I, I, I did not enjoy the four by three aspect ratio. But hey, Zack Snyder said he that's how he envisioned it for his to to make sure that it was up on IMAX and it's his movie. So there you go. See, yeah, see, we wanted a Snyder cut. We got it. Yep. It comes yeah. with all that. Half half my issues with it is, is like this cut would not have happened. Like it would not have been this way if things didn't happen and we didn't have to take over. Like there's no way this would have actually been his cut. It's like, he literally just got to do whatever the hell he wanted to do. You're absolutely And I don't right. know why I have issues with that, but I have issues. I don't know why it bugs me. It's, it's but because I just... it feels like someone's trying to pull one over on you and you don't like it. And I understand that feeling. Okay. <laughs> Uh, all right, John. There you go. That's uh, Zack Snyder's Justice League. I also watched a Batman thing this week for my week's watch. Uh, if you know the YouTube group or YouTube channel Bat in the Sun, they have made many quote unquote fan films of your favorite fictional characters that fight. They went on to make a new one that they had a Kickstarter for. Um, or I'm, was it? No, I think it was Indiegogo. Actually, it's called Batman Dying Is Easy, and it is a 25 minute Batman fan film. Uh, they they use the same Batman actor they've used previously. Uh, the the main guy over there is the one that they used to play the Joker, and um, and and they even get a bunch of cameos. They have Doug Jones in there as the Riddler. They have Michael Madsen in as Harvey Bullock. And the 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 beginning of it is very actiony. It's it's very actiony in the way that Batman is, and he is fighting and beating people up. But most of it is very psychological because it's all a conversation between Batman and uh, the Joker in Joker's cell. Um, hmm. Essentially. He is informed that there are police officers that are um, being held hostage throughout the city, and he knows that the Joker is knows where those hostages are, where those officers are. He goes into the cell, and they have a word battle, so to speak, and they, you know they they poke at each other and stuff like that, which it, I think actually turns out really great. It's it's a really cool uh, little scene between the two of them. And um, eventually, well, I don't want to spoil it, spoil it for anybody. Uh, so if you get the opportunity, go check it out. It is free on YouTube. So let's go ahead and get right into the Falcon and the Winter Soldier on Disney Plus. Uh, I guess one episode in of six. What is everybody's thoughts, John? It's good. Shinny. Shinny. <laughs> what? Shinny. <laughs> Shiny, as in like shiny. 
No, action e. Action oh, e. Oh, yeah. We none did not of us get the other part of that sound. <laughs> yeah, none of us got that part. <laughs> So, yeah, I think my like, noise gate isn't picking me up. <laughs> if it, you, were, you were just like, no, I really like the part like below the knee about this show. <laughs> <laughs> Jessica? It's good. I it's, liked it. I'm happy. The sound of those punches were just everything <laughs> I wanted. <laughs> it was like, oh, I don't know. I haven't noticed that in any other Marvel thing. But the, <laughs> that first fight scene in the airplane, I was like, why are they greatly exaggerating the sound of all the hits in this fight scene? And why do I like it so much? <laughs> Steven? So for this one, there's a lot to like about this, but I did feel weird going back to what feels like the normal MCU. Mm-hmm. Mm. Uh, like I, I don't know if that's a product of having been in WandaVision. For this long or because I don't feel like life is in the spot where the MCU existed in. I couldn't tell you if it's one of those one of those or the other. But it's nice to be back. This is a good show. I'm enjoying it. They they, they film it really well also. They did lens whacking in here. I don't know what that is. What does that mean? Um did you guys watch uh Sabrina? Like the Netflix one? The Chilling no. Adventures? Yeah. I did not. Uh, in, in the, uh, I don't know what else to point to it for that one. It basically, there's there's a thing that they do where they like end up kind of warping the image that's going uh, into the camera through mm-hmm. the lens, uh, mm-hmm. and so a portion of the thing is kind of like out of focus. You get a little bit of like double image, and they oh. did that during the scenes where he's talking to his counselor, and it was very well Ooh. used. Oh, you know, I was I was going to bring that scene up yeah. specifically. Um, there's a movie called Paparazzi with Cole Hauser. Uh huh. Where, um, the he's like a minor celebrity, and like some paparazzi are so tenacious that they cause him to get into a car accident. I think his like wife and daughter die or something like that. Uh. And I've only ever seen the trailer, but in the mm. trailer, there's several scenes where he's talking to a therapist, talking about how he's dealing with what happened, and it's shot almost exactly like some of these scenes, like you're talking about, where there are kind of some weird distortions on camera. There's mm-hmm. also some really weird angles where they're from like high up and to the side, mm-hmm. and like they're like real close ups to like the side mm-hmm. of the face of the mm-hmm. therapist and stuff. It's I was like, hey, that's like that wood movie. I had to look it up, and I thought it was um, another actor first, and I couldn't find it, and it's driving me crazy. And then like just before the show started, it just hit me. I was like, wait, that was Cole Hauser, not. Josh Lucas. Oh shit! So I looked that up and it was paparazzi because I always got those two guys confused because they were around the same time, you know, popular, <laughs> the late two uh, thousand, early two thousands. The other thing that I was thinking that it was similar to in those particular scenes was kind of besides the lens whacking part um, would be Mr. Robot. They oh. did the like the tight like the camera angles where the people were um, placed in odd spots mm-hmm. in that show a lot, so it felt a little bit like that at times. That's fair. Elizabeth, your initial thoughts? It was very good. The end of the episode very much upset me. <laughs> there was you so really, much you wrong. Hate, you hate, well, Do you hate Kurt Russell? No, Wyatt Russell. Well, yeah, but no, like we don't, I don't think she's going to know Wyatt Russell from anything. <laughs> <Okay>. No. <laughs> no um, so, Rich and I, I then, after we watched it last night... We had a solid 45-minute conversation and debate discussing the trademarking of Captain America and the potential <laughs> lapsing of trademarking of Captain America. And I don't think the U.S. government would have the right to utilize Captain America's image. Second, my bigger issue is the shield because it was private property gifted to Sam and then gifted to the Smithsonian as oh, a separate yeah. entity. Yeah. Would not The Smithsonian would not have the rights and permissions to have it utilized in that way. <laughs> Yeah, um, no, that was issue so too. <laughs> I was I was having significant issues with that. La- I'm like, well, not see, okay, not okay. But how the, the the banker stated, a lot of things have changed since the blip. So there could have been a lot of <laughs> updates to those laws, laws. Have changed. <laughs> I I don't think you guys recognize the fact that the the law is slow to change, very slow to change. Not much really would have changed in the law in five years. <laughs> Oh, the the one thing I would say that I think would 
expedite the process of changing laws would be how much insurance companies would have had to pay out suddenly for all the life insurance of things. The way they handle anything having to deal with the person who was gone during the blip uh-huh. might have changed pretty quickly. There Just for the sake of industry. There would have been definite case law, but trademark and copyright laws wouldn't well, that, have needed to, would not have needed to be adjusted particularly much um, because you would still have an heir who could continue on the copyright trademark uh, chain oh, of oh, ownership. I, I did you think that the trademark government- to it doesn't the government own the trademark to Captain That's America because what- he was well, used for U.S.O. shows and he was well, made through the army. But yeah. If they also licensed it to Marvel and the U.S. government may have let its trademark lapse while he was in the ice for 70 years because they wouldn't have a need to carry it on, it would then be privately owned by Marvel. If in the MCU, if Marvel continued to make make and produce Captain America comic books, additionally, if it potentially lapsed and the U.S. government was still the ownership, it's now public domain. Yeah. And so yeah. the U.S. government would have issues trying to recapture that trademark and copyright if, to Captain do America. We, do we think that's why his emblem and everything is different but similar? It is different. His suit is different. different. It is. It is. So that could is that, be it. Is that if the thing deficient. in like you can use a name when you say things, but you can't use a symbol? Like that Batman, ba- that Batman mm-hmm. show yeah. that I, I watched doesn't have the correct Batman symbol because that's copyrighted, but the correct. name Batman mm-hmm. isn't, right? Correct. Okay. Look, did anybody feel like the helmet that they gave him just made him look really goofy, like on purpose? Yeah. Like oh, on purpose. A- yeah. Because <laughs> one. Words. So. <laughs> Welcome, everybody, to our comic book legal <laughs> uh, trademark podcast. But first, uh, no, I definitely went and looked because uh, I've never seen Wyatt Russell without a beard. Uh, so to see him. See I, him. I still recognized him, though. Seeing his stupid what? big chin, I was like, that's that man. <laughs> no, that it, it's it like enhances his chin and nose with that helmet, that helmet cowl thing like it. It it does make him look like it makes him look like Popeye, like more than yes. anything else. I think yes, he looks that's like, what it looks. Like, uh, Beaker. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, poor right. Hey, does anybody know? Is there any other father and son, or mother daughter or mother son in um, the MCU? Because yeah. Kurt Russell was in Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Two, and Wyatt Russell now being in Falcon and Winter Soldier. I can't think I of anybody. Know. Uh-uh. If there isn't yet, I'm sure there will be. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Isn't somebody's kid play like a younger version of them in something? Is it Gamora? No. No, that wouldn't I don't think I don't think it's Zoe Saldana's daughter that plays the younger version of her. I, I could have sworn there was something like that somewhere in there. That'd be interesting. It'd be interesting to look up. But uh yes, at the end of the episode, we get the first look at our new Captain America. And if all things are same as the comic books, that would be John Walker, who eventually gets to be known as U.S. Agent instead of Captain America. Uh, uh, the that worst is, damn name. <laughs> that is a bad name, but I like it. He is one of my favorite characters. <laughs> like I, I, I even like the corny name. Um, also, for those who might not know the comic books, because I had to look this up because he's a relatively new character, Falcon's new kind of sidekick in the show, Joaquin Torres, is also Falcon in the comic books. He uh, Aww, he really is him. a mutant, though, <laughs> which I oh. think is the interesting thing. He's a mutant that actually has feathers growing out of his arms and back and then Ooh. also has, like, eagle vision or falcon vision or whatever you want to call it, bird vision. Um, so, <laughs> You're the fake falcon. I'm a real falcon. <laughs> <laughs> So I thought it was interesting that they brought him in as a character, but not as a mutant, at least not yet. Who knows if something is going to There's happen that everybody's X gene is going to get activated. I th- I really thought they would make the blip be the thing that activate the X gene, though. So did I. I really thought that's how it was going to be. But um, genetics takes time, I guess. That's, that's a good possibility. I like that. <laughs> It could it, know, but- it could be when he gets into ex- an extreme like situation where it like just kind of manifests itself. Someone throws him off of a cliff, and he's like, "Well, I'm about to die," and then decides to start flying. 
<laughs> you, you see him like ah, he's falling off a cliff, and all of a sudden it changes like ah. ah. <laughs> and then he's just a bird. And then, so I'm watching X Men, right? I from what I remember from X Men, you don't get it till you hit puberty. Puberty is usually <laughs> when it happens. Yeah. So like a dramatic change. So maybe like. He well, hasn't gone through puberty in his late twenties. No, no, but I, I think they're intentionally picking these this character to be like, ooh, mutant, but ooh, not to have the younger mutants who are currently teenagers in the universe come out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's what I assume. I assume if mutants come out, it would still come out in the same way, and that the teenagers that were blipped when they come back or whatever. Then I don't know. That's. I mean, I could think that's a good. I mean. Who knows exactly what happened when they were blipped? They went into some atomic particle stuff, it seemed like, if they could just come back. So something, and it had to do something to their genetics or something to their atoms, I would assume. Yeah. So, yeah. No, it's going to be interesting to see what they decide to do and why people, why mutants show up. Uh, so, yeah, that I wanted to throw that out there. What does everybody think of the sm- the Flag Smashers manifesto did anybody remember that like the the idea of there are no borders we're all one world yeah uh they're gonna gonna do it in a terrorist way though it sounds like a dumb it's it's like it's like so many things where they choose something that sounds reasonable and do insane stuff under that banner correct yeah yeah sounds like a good way to build up a criminal empire well appearing to be the good guys <laughs> i mean this is not the the first time that we've seen it in the mcu right like this, this is this was baron zemo's I, like kind of like things like i i can bring you all down because you shouldn't be existing kind of thing you you hurt people when you when you guys get together and fight other things um killmonger was like look you have all the power you could be helping uh other people around the world other people that look like us but you're not using your wakandan inventions and mm-hmm. in, in technology and then there's thanos mm-hmm. you know if, if there's less people there's more resources for everybody like there's these are all ideas that sound good like steven said but <laughs> they're not being done in a good way no the the road to hell is paved with good intentions that's correct <laughs> <laughs> very accurate what are what are we, what are our thoughts on the one f- flag smasher guy that we saw that was robbing the place and his superpowers how did how did he possibly get that well they gave it to him when they when they went to make him into u.s agent oh so he's the same guy oh yeah oh yeah oh i did not catch up on i did not pick on that at all oh yeah no 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 he's definitely i can i honestly think that john walker is not going to have any powers whatsoever he's literally just the the monkey that (laughs) steve rogers drew earlier like the in in his first avengers movie he's he's just a mascot like america came out and said we need another captain america because it brings people together and they just gave it to a guy he does have the gun so i would i I, yeah go ahead i i kind of sort of do hope it is that though because it's so obvious to me that he is bad i gotta sort of hope he's just useless (laughs) (laughs) my thing is is the bad guys are created so that that way you have a reason to have the new captain america yeah oh yeah it's also weird that they do that they use the method they do to get people together it's like the the lowest stakes way yeah, for them to make something happen, still be organized, but then get the word out with as many people as possible. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's it's like it's begging to be on the news and on the internet. Mm-hmm. I, I one I did not. I don't think I. I think my one of my issues with this first episode is that there wasn't as much as I liked it, as much as I enjoyed it, there wasn't a thing that grabbed me like the first episode of Wandavision because Wandavision had that gimmick. It was. Oh, sitcom, yeah. fifty sitcom or whatever, right? Yeah. Like, I, well, so, I, someone pointed out, Mitch, this the the one division wasn't the end of TV uh, references for sitcoms because the show is also half. My name is Earl. <laughs> oh God, that's right. I didn't even <laughs> think about that <laughs> because because he's going around making amends for what he did before. <laughs> Bucky's just coming in. Hi, my name is James Bucky Barnes. Uh, <laughs> 
you're on my list. <laughs> I need to make amends. <laughs> Which involves possibly harming you and definitely getting you arrested. Well, he didn't, she, he didn't harm the person on the list. He harmed the other person in the car. But yeah. <laughs> definitely got her arrested. <laughs> I did like that. Um, but I didn't like the fact that neither one of them met in the first episode. Like, they weren't yeah. together yet. Like, I, I understand we're building to that point. I just really felt like we needed that thing. Even if it was, like, the both of them watching the 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 um reveal of the new captain america like in different they could be yeah. in different rooms but they'd have to be watching at the same time like something that like says it. they both exist in the same world at the same time kind of thing to me do you eat your dessert first mitch what was that do you eat your dessert first i do not Really? Sometimes he does. <laughs> Do I? <laughs> no, he doesn't. Like, what? Okay, because I I eat the chips. It's a yeah, I just eat no. chips all the time, so I eat the appetizer. <laughs> he never gets to dinner. That's it's right. Just I never get appetizer to dessert. and dessert. Ah. <laughs> okay. See, you're missing the meat, the substance. You gotta, you gotta. This one, it's gonna feed it to you, but in the proper order. We're gonna get it. They know what they're doing to us. No, I I don't I don't mistrust them uh i have faith i guess is the best way to put it just like batman from Zack snyder's justice league i have faith so uh that was big for him yeah and out of character anyways so uh the other thing that i've always had a problem with and i don't know if anybody else has an issue with this or not and i I blame spider-man 2 and i'll get to why falcon's Mm. wings how exactly does he control them in in Aqua in in Spider Man two, uh, Doc Ock explains that he has to attach it to his like nervous system so that when he thinks of of the th- the arms to do something, they do something. But that's just a backpack that Sam wears. Like, how does he get it to react so quickly? Is is I it? I think it, like, would, it would have to be retina, like our eye tracking. Yeah. Oh, so the glasses. Well, they, mm-hmm. they did that's mention that it was Stark Tech. Uh, I, I know it's later. Stark Tech, but Stark, like, that's also, I assume, is 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 connected to his neural net somehow. I think it's yeah. definitely still, it's, a, it's doing AI correction and prediction. It's ready to do whatever he's going to tell it to do a little bit before. So as soon as he starts moving towards something with his eyes, probably, because it's the only thing that would react fast enough, it'll be prepared to, like, intercept that command and do it. Okay. That's my guess. Okay. Uh, I have also, and I've said this before on this podcast, I've never thought of Anthony Mackie as the greatest actor. However, he when he gives job. the speech at the Smithsonian, I thought he did an amazing job. Like, he delivered those lines really well. I was ready. I, I, I'm, I have to eat some crow. No, no bird pun in there intended <laughs> um, for, for this one, because I've talked poorly about anthony mackie's acting performance um mm-hmm. he did a good job here sebastian stan still outclasses him in acting in this one by far oh yeah <laughs> even well, though this is the best i've seen from anthony mackie i, I <laughs> yeah. feel like sebastian stan really has to with his background like this is really well acted i will also note the acting of the psychiatrist was top <laughs> she was just like not perfect i'm done with this shit. <laughs> come on like i was a soldier too can we not do this bullshit like just great i i'm great. done i am done being in professional mode because i'm sick of your baloney i'm, I'm tired of you yeah. lying to me <laughs> mm-hmm. did, now, did, did anyone else think i feel like john and i would have been tracking the same kind of thought for this one um but did you, John, or anyone else think that when he started, when we started to put together the idea that that man was a person on his list, the the friend of his, Yori, that he was an older person that he might have interacted with? Like, did you have like a little moment of dread? Like, ah, oh, crap, is he going to have to like do something to this guy? It yeah, I thought he like was be a, pos- a positive one. I, I thought he was, uh, I, well, I, I thought he was one of the holding commandos. At first. So did I. Uh, yeah, I, I would. I thought. I thought originally that he was going to be an old uh, World War Two like, uh, what are those called? Not buddy, but like comrade, soldier, mm. whatever. Compatriot. Uh, compatriot. There you go. Um, but I, I, just, <laughs> I just, as soon as he said uh, something about his son, I was like, oh nope, 
nope, we know exactly yep. who it's going to be because, you know, all Asians are related. <laughs> oh. uh, the pairing of the flashback, I think, is it was really the, what actually yeah, did it. Was it. The- flashback that did it for me was like they showed that flashback of him killing uh the son and then they show him being friends with an older asian guy and i was like this is a different form of amend is what mm-hmm. i got yeah. so yeah yeah it, and we we we're all at a spot where he moved into that apartment to be closer to where this man is and that's why he has no mattress i don't think he wouldn't have a, that he would have a mattress all the time in all of his apartments but it's still shockingly sparse in there <laughs> but i that that's a, also a throwback to winter soldier when like yeah. cap tells says the falcons like sleeping on beds makes you feel like you're gonna fall through like it's a cloud like sleeping on the floor yeah. feels co- more comfortable mm-hmm. yeah that's just a soldier thing yeah <laughs> it's a bts with thing. everything we've been yeah. through yeah. It probably doesn't take comfort in many you know extracurriculars well that's yeah, great. you know, and I also I really enjoyed that little bit of dialogue that he 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 shared where it's like I literally went from thing to thing like I fell into the ice and then they woke me up. I went to go fight. I came back and I went to go fight like it's every time they woke me up. I just fought. And this is the only time that I've had to myself or Wakanda was the only time that I had to myself. And and he found something there, but obviously wasn't wasn't allowed to to hold on to it. Uh, as he was called back to fight for Infinity War. I've mm-hmm. been fighting for 70 years. Give me a minute. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I mean, you think about back to uh, Captain America First Avenger, like before Steve takes the um, the super, sur- super su- soldier serum and and you see Buck and him out with the, the two ladies on the town, like, it's a different different version of him. Like it's even different now. Like he, that he's been through it so much, and and the fact that you don't you you get the feeling that he's never going to get to that again. Especially no. when he goes on the date with the the sushi chef. I don't know if she's a chef. At least a wait waitress. Oh, that's just like a bartender where they happen to serve food. Also, oh okay, that's, that's what, what I got from the the mood of it. Mm-hmm. What bar do you yeah, know that closes at more... 10? <laughs> That's fair. You got me there. <laughs> <laughs> this, this is very true. Maybe she's one bartender, bartender at a restaurant. Yeah, that, that would make more sense. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't know any bars that close at 10. <laughs> Not ones that want to stay open. Or stay yeah, in stay business. In business. Yep, there, there you go, Utah. It's a dry... Yeah. <laughs> no, they roll, they roll up at like 8, don't they? Yeah, it's pretty dry. But, but now, Elizabeth, we did have a place in town that was open for a while that had a really good bar that we would go to the really good bar for. But it was a restaurant, technically, so it did close at 10. But we yes. had a really good bartender. So that's, yeah, that's the same. She definitely had the vibe of a bartender over a chef. Mm-hmm. For sure. <laughs> so who else thought that you got paid to be an Avenger? Because I honestly thought Tony Stark would be paying people. No. No. John did. I mean, hey, I think John I and I. you have to get some kind of commission for it. Because, I mean, like, Sam isn't uh, an active soldier anymore. Uh, so you would think that he would at least get, he's probably getting that uh, retirement check. But, like, yeah, mm-hmm. I would hope. Yeah, he, I can get a think... retirement check. And also, when you do contracts for the military, even if they're special op contracts, you do get paid for those contracts. So. <laughs> it, and. To me, I would have assumed the Sokovia Accords would have co- included compensation. If you're if you are going to regulate these individuals, that's also true. Then you would need to compensate them for that control and that's, regulation. That's what was happening in the Avengers Initiative or the Initiative when they did in the comic books. So uh, you think that the Sokovia thought, Accords would have done the same? That's where I thought they would get paid, but then a bunch of them didn't go with that. See, but the other thing is, is I'm not sure. Because the bank situation talked about no income for the last five years. He mm-hmm. was gone for those five years during the blip. Right. So he wouldn't have re- been receiving an income. True, but he also wasn't... For him, it wasn't five years. I would make that yeah. argument. I'd be yeah. like, I have been making... It's just my five years is different than your last five years. Yes. Yeah. No. So. No. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, but that's not how a bank would see it no True. Bank doesn't care <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's, there's one of the most interesting things i think 
about this series is what I've wanted the whole time that we we knew we were going to come back to the MCU to see the things like the minutia of life that would happen because of the blip, blip. which I still hate as a name. <laughs> uh, that the things like having to go in and get a loan or anything like that and then pointing to the fact that you've been gone mm-hmm. like yeah. those kind of things I want but we have six episodes that's as much as we really get of them talking about that the rest is going to be the personal implications but uh-huh. honestly I think that's what all the movies and shows in the phase four are going to be about it's going to be because we already have it happened in uh Spider-Man: Far From Home. We had it happen mm-hmm. in Wandavision. We have it happen. In, we have it happening now. Like I think that the but did this, we really we did, did we get, get it in, one... in Spider-Man? In what now? Spider-Man? In Spider-Man? The most I feel like the thing that we got that was the biggest in Spider-Man was damn that one guy got really tall and buff and all the girls like him now. This is true. Like yeah, it, we got it's the not teenager version of it in Spider-Man, which teenagers just shrug off and their I, trauma. So. And I'm saying I'm yeah. saying that's what we're going to get in everything like we're going to get how everybody yeah little bits and how everybody else deals with it in their own way like this is this is a big part for sam what what do we do Mm -hmm. about money it for for buck it's not a big difference because he's always had time loss like kind of thing and apparently the u.s government's paying for his psychiatry or his therapy so (laughs) well Well, yes when when, when they require it as a (laughs) As I say, when they give you a condition on parole, they have to pay for that condition. <laughs> well, there you go. Because <laughs> he is essentially on parole. <laughs> Let's be very clear. Um, yeah, he is an assassin. <laughs> but, now, is it fair to talk about stuff that we haven't seen in the show yet, but was, was visible in trailers? Uh, I would hold off, just because I know there are, at least in this group, people that didn't watch the trailer. <laughs> John, I'm with you, and I want to talk about this at some point. Okay. Because <laughs> uh, I, I also have a thing that I was like, wait a second, but... <laughs> <laughs> uh, you can all talk about it when I leave the room. <laughs> what, what is everybody's hope going forward for the next five episodes, uh, Elizabeth? Um, obviously, I hope to see them actually meet up and start working together, which I know will occur at some point. Uh, Really what I want to see is Sam actually make amends with his sister and Mm -hmm. get off his high horse just a little bit. (laughs) Um, Because that is a thing I feel that everybody, we, we continually talk about things from the perspective of people who were gone for those five years and not from the perspective of the people who had to survive those five years, mm-hmm. with the exception of the very first part um, with in Endgame, with Steve um, running the therapy session. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. we, but we don't get anything post everybody's return, right. what it was like to have to survive those five years. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I do very much hope that that will get resolved at some point. Steven? Uh, I want two things from this one. Uh, first, like a real conversation uh, about the idea of uh, like, is America ready and would America be ready and embrace the idea of a black Captain America? Um, mm-hmm. I want that. And then two, I want to see them have this weird metaphorical idea of a person who was always the manager's right hand person that doesn't necessarily have to ascend to be the manager once the manager leaves or something for another job you know mm. like i want them to have that it doesn't the the person who was the second in command doesn't always have to become the manager they can just be a really good asset to the next manager and yeah. i'm curious about how they'll deal with that with these two characters in particular because they both have the same kind of like uh, rights to the kingdom in this right. sense. Jessica? Yeah. I don't know. I, I think I'm kind of along the lines of Elizabeth and definitely Stephen. I want to see this one be kind of sort of grounded in our reality to how it is, which I think is the intention because I think I heard something about how this is also going to focus on race and patriotism in America. So 
Mm-hmm. I very much look forward to that. And I hope, I mean, I trust, I do have faith in these writers that they can do it in a good way. So, yeah. John? Um, I hope Bucky goes back, apologizes to the nice lady, and uh, maybe if uh, gets another chance. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure that's going to happen in episode six. So just just wait. Uh, my thing is, I just hope I get to see each one of the characters in a Captain America-esque suit at one point. That's literally all I want. I want to see Buck's shiny outfit and uh, Sam's uh, red, white, and blue Falcon outfit. So I think that would be pretty cool. I also would love Has to see... Has there been a Captain America core? Not to my knowledge, but like at the beginning of Secret Empire, you had um, his two sidekicks that were very much dressed that way, and I can't think of their name at the moment. Um, but I also would love to oh. see Elijah Bradley if, or yeah, it, I think it's, yeah, Elijah Bradley, it, the Patriot it, mm-hmm. of the Young Avengers. So, yeah. What were you about That'd to say, cool. Stephen? I, I forgot. I wanted to point out so much earlier on and us talking about this, that we, the two main characters of the show, uh, one of them is named James Buchanan and the other one was referred to as Uncle Sam in the episode. Yep. Just wanted to point that out. <laughs> <laughs> it's all very American. <laughs> okay, if you have any opinions on this show or anything that we talked about earlier, you can uh, find me on Twitter. I'm at Mitchipedia G-E-M. G-E-M stands for Geek Elite Media. Steven, where can people find you online? Uh, you can find me all across the internet as some version of Peppermint Gentleman. On Twitter, it's Peppermint Gent. But don't go there. Um, do me a favor and go over to geeklymedia.com and go read an article that John wrote recently um, about the top five things that were left unanswered in WandaVision. Don't you mean Ooh. WandaVision? Nope, don't mean that. That never happened. <laughs> <laughs> Jessica? You can tweet at me as at JM Bailey writes. John. And I am also on Twitter at Magic Bollocks, also on Discord at Magic Bollocks. <laughs> <laughs> Take that, Ian. <laughs> uh, uh, Elizabeth, where can people find you online? You can find me with the rest of Geek Elite Media at Geek Elite Media and our Facebook page forward slash Geek Elite Media. That's right. Go to geekleetmedia.com for more of John's writings. He should have more articles coming your way. Uh, just give them a read. They're pretty awesome. Uh, mm-hmm. There's also archived episodes archive of this episode and other ne- episodes of other podcasts on our network on our website. Whatever podcast you used to listen to, please <laughs> rate and review us. It helps spread the word of our network. But until next time, this is the Geeks Watch on the Geek Elite Media Network saying always remember to... Geek out. Geek out. This concludes our broadcast.